welcome to Science Rendezvous 2022 here at the Toronto Zoo. My name is Brent and I'm a keeper here in our invertebrate breeding center. And we're here to meet some of our spiders. Now, spiders are invertebrates and invertebrate is basically means they don't have a backbone. So whereas we as, as humans, we are vertebrates, our skeleton is on the inside. So we've got skin on the outside, our bones are inside our bodies to provide structure. For a spider or an insect or other invertebrates that have an exoskeleton, that skeleton is on the outside of their body. So that exoskeleton protects all of their internal organs, but it, it means they have some different challenges that, uh, that we don't have. And one of the, the main challenges they face is when they try to grow. Because that exoskeleton is rigid, it, it prevents them from getting bigger. And so when a, a spider or an insect needs to grow, they actually have to shed that out, outer layer and make a new exoskeleton that's larger. And that gives us the opportunity to meet one of our spiders really up close and personal. This is a shed from one of our giant bird-eating spiders. As I mentioned, this is just the external skeleton. The spider has actually crawled out of it um, and left this behind. And so there's a little cap here that has popped off the back. And on the inside, you can see is where all the internal organs used to, uh, used to live. And uh, you can actually see where the spider has pulled its legs out from the old exoskeleton before the new exoskeleton hardened uh, in, its, in its bigger size. Now, as we look at this exoskeleton, there are a few key features of spiders that are really readily apparent. Uh, the first is how many legs there are. Now, most people will know that spiders have eight, eight legs, so four pairs, and that differentiates them from insects, which only have six legs. But as we look at this exoskeleton, you might think that I'm counting wrong because there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten what look like legs on this exoskeleton. And yes, there are ten legs there, but only eight of them are actual legs. This front pair are called pedipalps. And although they look like legs, they actually act much more like an insect antenna. So they are scanning the environment, they're sensing, um, rather than actually helping the spider move. Now, another neat thing about spiders, they have eight legs, but did you know they also have eight eyes? And those eyes are right up here at the top of their, of their carapace or their shell, their exoskeleton. And unlike our eyes, which see a lot of detail, a spider's eyes, they don't. They can sense light and dark, and they can sense movement, but they don't get a very clear picture of the world. Um, and so even though they have eight eyes, they don't see especially well. Instead, spiders rely on their sense of touch a lot, which leads us to another feature that spiders share, which are their webs. Now, spiders have this really cool ability to spin silk. And although when we see a spider's web, it looks like it's made up of, of single threads, the, the way that they make that silk is actually really complicated. Um, it's in, when it's inside the spider, it's actually liquid. And they have these, they're called spinnerets at the back of their body, where they push this liquid out and as it comes out of these spinnerets, it forms into these very, very tiny threads that then get spun together into a solid structure that we see as a spider web. Now, spiders can control how much web they're producing and what the actual characteristics of that webbing is. So some spiders will produce sticky silk, um, which if you've ever walked into a spider web, it's a really gross feeling because of all the sticky threads that a spider will use to actually catch its prey. Um, but spiders use silk in uh, lots of other ways too. Uh, a female will wrap her egg sac in silk to protect the babies um, or protect the eggs until they develop into babies. 
um, they can, baby spiders can actually, I think it's called ballooning with silk, well, they will send out a thread and it will catch the wind and they will travel very far distances on air currents because of, of that thread. Now, tarantulas, um, like this bird-eating spider, they are not web spinners. They're actually ambush predators that wait, in, in, wait for their prey to, to walk, walk by, and then they'll rush out and grab onto them. But they still do produce silk. Um, some tarantulas will make a trip line in front of their burrow out of silk that if an insect walks by and, and touches it, it makes a vibration that the spider will sense and know that there's something waiting out uh, in, front of, in front of its burrow to eat. Um, but they also uh, will line their environment with silk um, to basically help them navigate, to know that it's familiar space. Um, and uh, these spiders do burrow as well. So they'll go into the, into the earth and they will actually use their silk to line their burrows to make sure that nothing caves in. So lots of really cool ways that, uh, that different spiders use silk in different ways. So I'm gonna put down this, uh, this exoskeleton, which again is from the giant bird-eating spider, which is one of the largest spiders in the world. And now we're gonna meet perhaps one of the prettiest spiders in the world. This is a green bottle blue tarantula. This is a male and he has built quite the web in his enclosure here at the zoo. Now this is typical of, the, um, of this species. They live both on the ground and in trees at low levels, and the web provides them with security. And so this male has built almost a hammock in his enclosure to kind of mark it as his own, make sure he feels comfortable, and basically say that this is where I live. Now we can see he has spinnerets just like the other, um, other spiders at the back. And again, that is where that silk is made. And just like the giant bird eating spider, this tarantula's web is not sticky at all. It is designed for comfort and stability rather than catching prey. So those are just two of the species of spiders that we uh, have here at the zoo. Did you know throughout the world, there are over 40,000 different kinds of spiders? And right here in Canada alone, there are over 1,400 species. There are lots of spiders in the world. They are all predators, meaning that they hunt other animals, but they're generally not dangerous to people. Spiders hunt using venom, but because we are so large, most of the time their venom doesn't hurt us at all. Or if it does, we just get a little bump like a mosquito bite. So don't be afraid of spiders. Um, when you're out walking around or even in your house maybe, have a look and see what kinds of spiders you can see and admire the diversity of spiders. Remember, they don't all build these sticky Halloween-like orb, orb webs. Some of them are, are hunting spiders that actively chase their prey. Some of them make tangle webs that will catch their prey in a, in a mesh, mesh of non-sticky webs. And the best time, I think, to see a spider is early in the morning on a summer's day when there's lots of dew in the air because a spider's web will actually collect all that dew. Investigate it, see how it's made because that web is generally made every single night, brand new. And, and when a spider is done using its web for the day, it will actually eat it in order to get all of the proteins that make up the web so they can spin another web the next night. Really cool spiders. Thank you so much for joining me here at your Toronto Zoo.